All right, so in the previous video, we um, introduced the notion of the density matrix notation for a pure state. And in this video, we're going to generalize that and, and see how we can define this for, for mixed states. So, so we said, you know, for a pure state, uh, let's say a pure state psi, the density matrix is given by simply the outer product of that state with itself. Right, so is the the ket of psi times the bra of psi, right? That's that's the definition for a pure state. Now for mixed states, so for a mixed state, um, what we're going to have is well, let's start with a simple example like uh, what we had in the first video, where where you know Bob um, received two possible states, right? State zero or state one. Right, each with uh, a, an associated probability of one half. Right, so the way we define the density matrix for this ensemble of of possible pure states is simply by taking the sum of the outer product of each state, weighted by the probability of occurrence. So in this case, well, what is the probability of uh, the state zero um, occurring? Well, it's one half, and then we multiply that with the outer product of uh, zero, um, and then plus the probability of obtaining state one times the outer product of state one. And that will be the density matrix for this uh, particular mixed state. Now we can, we can um, turn this into an actual matrix, um, you know, just remembering that the outer product of, of a state is, is a matrix itself, right? So if we take, you know, uh, ket zero times bra zero, well, that's the column vector one zero times the row vector one zero, which is the matrix uh, one zero zero zero, and same for, for one. Um, you know, we can do that, that same math, but that gives you a matrix uh, of the form 0, 0, 0, 1. And if we replace these two in, in our uh, um, density matrix draw above, well, we get 1 half of uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, plus 1 half of 0, 0, 0, 1, which is basically a diagonal matrix of the form 1, 0, 0, 1. And, and that's it, that's, that's the density matrix of, of that example. Now, we can, we can actually generalize this for any mixed state composed of M pure states, and, and they can be of any arbitrary number of qubits. If we have, let's say, um, you know, a, a list of states going from one to M, and, and this notation just, just means that I have a list of, you know, states I1, uh, psi 2 all the way up to psi sub m, right? And then um, each state has uh, associated probabilities, uh, p sub i, um, and this is just, you know, p1, p2, and so on till p, m, p sub m, right? Uh, so in general, the density matrix for, for a state like this is given by well, the sum, the sum from i equal one to m of the outer product of each of these states, psi sub i, weighted by the probability of occurrence of each of those states. So that's the definition, the general definition of a density matrix for um, for mixed states, and obviously this this also um, applies to pure states. It's just that for a pure state, here you only have one state, and this p sub i is equal to one, right? So, so for pure states, it, it, it applies to, but there's there's only one term, right? So, so that's that's pretty much it. So, um, I wanna I wanna just go over through um, another example, a little bit more complicated than than the one we just had up here. So, let's say. Uh, we have a similar scenario to what we had in, in the first video. So, so let's say we have, you know, some, some hardware uh, that we know works really well 
when we use a Hadamard gate. So, so this, this piece of hardware we have always prepares the state plus um, very precisely. But then we want to apply after that an S gate. And for some reason, um, our quantum processor is not, not working so well. And, and every now and then, this S gate doesn't, doesn't really get applied correctly. So, so, you know, it has some, let's say, noise associated with it. And, and um, what, what happens is that with 80% probability, um, this gate does, um, does apply the S gate, right? Uh, but then for some reason, uh, with 10% probability, it's actually applying, um, let's say, S dagger. So S dagger, so uh, rotation in the, in the other direction. And, and then with the remaining 10% probability, it, it doesn't do anything. So it basically is equivalent to applying an identity, right? And, and um, if we look at this in the block sphere, um, so, you know, we, we know that we, we managed to, to prepare the state plus very accurately. So, so we know that, that, um, that we're starting right off here with a plus state. And then, you know, the, the S gate, what, what it does is it, it rotates this plus state to uh, the R state, right? So that's what the S gate does. Um, and then S dagger, what it does is it rotates in the opposite direction. So, so S dagger here um, actually uh, turns the plus state into the left, left state. So, uh, and obviously that the identity just leaves the plus state unchanged. So if we were to, you know, write down our uh, mixed state in, in the form of a, an ensemble of states, so we have, um, you know, psi sub i, uh, I from one to three, right? We have three possible um, outcomes. Uh, we know that we're gonna get, well, uh, if the S gate gets applied correctly, we get uh, state R, right? If 10% um, of the times we, we are applying um, S dagger, we're gonna get state left. And then the other remaining 10% of the times, we, we're just gonna be left with uh, the plus state unchanged, right? And with this, we have some associated probabilities um, of, you know, eight over 10, right? 80%, uh, one over 10, and one over 10 for the identity that prepares the, or leaves the plus state unchanged. If we were to now construct the density matrix for this mixed state, well, what we would do is, again, we just um, sum all of the three states, the outer products of, of, of the three states, and multiply, multiply them or weigh them by their uh, probability of occurrence. So then we get, you know, eight over 10 times the outer product of state R, right? Plus one over 10, um, the state left or L and uh, plus one over 10 state plus, right? And then um, we can obviously replace each of this, you know, um, states in, in their Dirac notation by the, their corresponding uh, state vectors. So, so we can have like eight over 10, and then the R state is given by one, o one over root two, um, one I, right? And then the bra of that is one over root two, and then here one, and then remember, we, we gotta take the complex conjugate, so minus i here, right? And then plus one over 10. And then, you know, the, the left state is, is pretty much the same as the right state, it's just the, we have a minus sign associated with the, with the i, right, and it's column vector. So, so here, we have a minus here, right? Right here, and then this minus becomes a plus. And then uh, the last term is, is for the, the outer product of this plus state, which it would be plus one over 10, one over root two, one, one, times one over root two, the row uh, version of that one, one, right? Um, and then, you know, we can, we can now um, multiply this, each of these, um, column vectors with the row vectors 
to get uh, matrices. So, so we can do that. Let's move down here. So rho is equal to 8 over 10 times 1 half. And that 1 half is from multiplying this 1 over 2 times this 1 over root 2, right? Times um, this column vector here, right? Times this row vector. So, so we get uh, 1 minus i, i. And then here we, we're multiplying i times minus i, so uh, minus i squared, which is uh, minus 1 time, times, times minus 1, so that's just 1, right? Plus 1 over 10 times 1 half, again 1 half coming from multiplying this 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. And then we get a matrix of the form 1 i i 1, right? Plus uh, 1 over 10 times 1 half of just 1, 1, 1, 1. And then, you know, we can combine all of this together to get a single matrix. Um, and uh, I'm not going to do the math here. I, I have already done that. So, so um, it's going to give us 1 over 20 uh, times 10, 1 plus 7i. 1 minus 7i, and then 10 down here. And as you can see here, I mean, if I just uh, take this, this 1 over 20 in there, uh, we're going to get uh, 1 half, uh, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.35i, 0 0.05 plus 0.35i, and then 1 half here. And as you can see here, uh, an important thing about density matrices uh, is that similar to what we had for pure states, the, the diagonal terms here add up to one. Now, now, in the case of pure states, we had seen that each of the diagonal elements was the norm square of the probability amplitude associated with each eigenstate um, of, of uh, a specific basis. Here, uh, it's going to be something slightly different. It's, it's not only the probability amplitudes, the quantum probabilities, but also the probabilities that, uh, the classical probabilities by which these this, uh, amplitudes are weighted by. And, and we'll cover this in more detail with, with the math associated with it, so, so you can see it. Uh, but, but yeah, an important thing is that the diagonal of a density matrix always uh, sums up to one because the diagonal elements always represent the probabilities of obtaining uh, a given um, outcome. So yeah, so, that, so that's it. So in the next video, what I want to do is talk about some of the properties uh, density matrices have and how uh, do we evolve this, this uh, mixed states through unitaries and, and why the density matrix is so convenient and, and allows us to do that in, in an easy way.